Uh, hello, I'm Lawrence, um, doing some work at Project Heaven here in the engine room. Uh, today we're going to talk about this F4R engine, uh, which has come from a 205 uh, T16 Group B rally car replica. And um, we're going to be boosting the power of that uh, engine today. The 205 T16 uh, Group B rally car was something of a legend back in the 80s. Uh, having something like 16 wins, a uh, four-wheel drive system, a rear-mounted engine, and um, depending on, on the year, uh, I think uh, up to something like 500 horsepower. A customer has a, a 205 T16 replica, uh, it's a lovely car, rear-mounted engine, uh, although in the customer's car it's, uh, it's north-south, I think in the rally car it was uh, transversely mounted. This uh, customer's been in a few times for some uh, various uh, issues with the car, uh, one of the major jobs Project Heaven did was um, redesigning the rear suspension. The, uh, the geometry was, was sound, uh, but the components were a little flexible. So uh, we made a, a far more rigid lower wishbone. Uh, customer was fairly happy with that. So now the car seems ready for a lot more power. So what it did have was, was this Formula Renault engine, essentially a, a Clio 182 engine, uh, which was in its, in its guise making around 190 horsepower. Um, lots of trick bits on it, um, dry sump kit, um, sequential gearbox, lovely clutch, very light flywheel uh, and a good management but um, it's ready to up the power now, the car can take more. So what we've done is uh, bought a whole load of components uh, to, to blueprint and um, strengthen the engine a great deal which is what we're working on today, uh, ready for uh, adding more power and we're going to add that power with a supercharger. So uh, here we've got a Rotrex uh, supercharger which should be sufficient for well over 400 horsepower. Uh, we're building the engine for uh, 400 horsepower and we'll be initially aiming for a figure of around 350 horsepower. Uh, so we've had it all apart, there was nothing wrong with it, it's done very few miles in fact, uh, so it was all in very good condition. So the last uh, few days we've been checking it over, cleaning it, taking various bits out so we can clean all the oil galleries and things. We have been checking tolerances, so we've done um, plastic gauge checking of all the bearings, um, checking piston ring gaps and uh, the land gaps and uh, all, all the checks you do uh, to make sure an engine is going to be um, absolutely sound and with intolerance. So uh, part of the, uh, the upgrades then, all, all of these components are new. Um, so we've got new pistons for a lower compression ratio. Uh, obviously we need a much lower compression ratio to uh, well, effectively uh, double the horsepower really, uh, which obviously come with new rings, gudgeon pins, uh, these lovely um, forged rods. Um, we've had these all, uh, well they, they came quite nicely balanced, the rods were all within 0.1 of a gram of each other at 600 grams. The pistons were very close, three of them were within about 0.2 or 3 grams of each other, but the last was a, a whole gram lighter, so we've done a bit of work to balance that, so all of those are within a, a 0.1 of a gram now as an assembly. Uh, so it's important those components stay uh, as they are, because the weight has come off one component, but perhaps a different component was, was the part which had uh, the, the mismatch in weight. Uh, so it doesn't actually matter which piston um, bore we put those in, but as long as those components stay together. Uh, we've put new piston cooling jets in there as well, as those were, well, they were absent in this build for some reason. Uh, but they'll definitely need those oil cooling nozzles with this extra power. So far I've got one piston in, uh, and I was just about to put another one in here. We've doused it in oil, we've got assembly lube on the crankshaft on the shell here. Uh, we've got an engine oil on the bore, and the piston rings have been... Uh, oh, here we are. Piston rings have been um, doused in oil, so they've got uh, a synthetic oil, more like what the engine will be using, and the skirts as well. So that's, uh, that's that one, sorry. All right, so we're going to put this piston in here. I'm actually doing it in the reverse order for some reason. This is piston number three. So we've uh, put all the oil on the piston and the rings. We've used the piston ring compressor here and wind that as tight as possible there, so it compresses the rings, which means you can slide it into the bore. Uh, on the top there, there's... Um, some cutouts for the valves because uh, it's an interference engine uh, and those cutouts are different sizes for the inlet and exhaust so the manufacturer has indicated with a little arrow the direction uh, to put the exhaust so the exhaust side of the engine is this side and the arrow is pointing that way so the piston, piston needs to go in that way so just drop it in the bore make sure the crank is in a, a suitable place so you're not going to knock straight into it and then make sure it's uh, reasonably lined up and then you can just knock it gently in with a hammer it might tighten up a little when you get to the rings. There we go, just gone past some of the rings there. Um, check, it's not contacting the crankshaft. Oh, yeah. oh, there we go, it's in. So the tool is now used. 
you can knock that further down. And now I need to rotate the engine so that I can uh, see the, the bottom of the con rod as well. So we can put some more engine assembly lube on. It's just like a, a really thick oil. You can see as I take the container away, it's incredibly stringy. Like, um, And then make sure that it's assembled as it came apart. So this has the tang there. And this has the tang there. Those were next to each other, so it stops the rotation of the bearing. So it goes that way. And then holding the piston in place, you can give it a gentle knock, but the uh, the bolts the bolts will do the majority of pulling the cap onto the rod. So the next thing is to get the bolts, the ARP bolts, and we're going to lubricate them um, with a, a grey lubricant so we can tighten those down. So these are the ARP bolts. They've got their own assembly lube on them now which gives a very continuous friction as you tighten them in. So they wind those in. You check all these, uh, the fits with plastic gauge check before putting any of this together with oil. So you, put it, you assemble it dry, check all the clearances so there's not going to be a problem when you assemble it. But of course when these are tightened down, they all um, want to spin the engine to check that there's no hard patches in the rotation and it spins freely all the way around. So we'll wind that in gently uh, as there's a locating collar. I just want to tighten that and close the gap. Uh, and then I'll torque it correctly when all four pistons and the rods are in. Do them all together with a torque wrench. There, so those are hand tight and, and they're seated now, ready for talking later. All right, so that second piston is in now. We've got two more to go. Uh, we'll torque those down and put the sump on. And then this, uh, this engine block uh, is sort of ready to go then, waiting for the head to be assembled. So the next step is um, to disassemble the head, do the same process, really clean it all down, put a load of high performance parts in it, uh, in canal exhaust valves and uh, camshafts, so more high performance camshafts. Uh, then the head can be bolted on. Then we can start offering it up to the uh, the engine bay of the car, which is quite a tight space. This uh, this engine goes right up against the back of the um, the bulkhead with the passenger sat in front, uh, passenger and driver. So then the the tricky the tricky um, task of uh, positioning this supercharger, uh, trying to make sure there's room for it, getting the uh, the ratio of pulley sizes correct, uh, and yeah, packaging all the equipment that goes with the supercharger. Well, thanks for joining us today for this video from Project Heaven. Um, there'll be more updates on this um, build later on. Uh, if you've got a similar project or a car of any age really uh, going way back or a, a more um, 80s car or even a modern car which you need something doing something like this then uh, you know you can call Project Heaven.